All right, everyone. Um, I'd like to invite everyone, all our distinguished guests, exercise players, observers. To, you know, if you haven't taken your seat, those in the hall, please make your way to the conference hall so we can uh, start our program back up. Um, as Dave and I were joking during uh, when the breakout occurred, I think uh, one lesson learned is in party favors, we should plan to provide ponchos in the event of. Um, but, you know, the weather ultimately worked out well for us, and I thank everyone for bearing the elements and uh, for the tour group leads. I, we sincerely appreciate your efforts in leading the brigade out throughout the, the, the confines of the campus. So now on behalf of the exercise team and as a local host at the University of Illinois at Chicago, I'd like to express my gratitude to Storm Services as well for providing today's lunch. Now it is a great honor and privilege to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Thomas Sivak. An expert in emergency planning, Mr. Sivak is a deputy director for the city of Chicago Office of Emergency Management and Communications. In this role, he is responsible for emergency and disaster planning for the city, EOC activations, a 24-7 coordination center, and special event contingency planning. During his tenure, Mr. Sivak has led EOC activations for the Chicago Marathon, Pride Parade, and the 2015 Chicago Blackhawks Stanley Cup clinch game and victory parade. I scaled down my voice because of this season. It didn't go too well for us. But in the next statement, it'll pick back up because I'm a Northsider. Most recently, he served as the EOC manager for a 2016 World Champion, World Series Champions, Northside Chicago Cubs. There's not many Northsiders here at UIC. They're mostly Southsiders. Mr. Sivak previously served as executive director for the Hamilton County Emergency Management Division in Indiana. During this time, he was also the planning section chief for the Indianapolis Division of Homeland Security, where he acted as a lead planner for Super Bowl 46 incident management team and special events surrounding the Indianapolis 500. His experience includes recovery effort roles during the Enbridge oil spill Henryville F4 tornado, Indiana State Fair, and the Indianapolis Southside explosion. Mr. Sivak's career in emergency management began in Southwest Michigan, where he served as a director of emergency services for American Red Cross, deputy bioterrorism coordinator for Kalamazoo Center for Medical Studies, and as regional security planner for Kalamazoo County Sheriff's Department. A native of East Cleveland, Ohio, Sivak is a certified emergency manager with the International Association of Emergency Managers and holds a master's degree of science in public service management from DePaul University here in Chicago. Give you Tom Sivak. Thank you, sir. I didn't realize you're going to read the whole bio. That's actually longer than you gave me to speak. So. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of our executive director, Alicia Tate Nadeau, I'd like to sincerely thank you for your time and energy in planning today's exercise and making it happen. If we think about what happened today, this was about a year long process to bring together the ideas, the challenges that come into making sure nothing goes wrong, and then the latest ideas at four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning of what's gonna happen when it rains. But what we do in our field is we're contingency planners. We made sure it happened, and it happened without any fault, and everybody's going home to their family, which is the most important part. But what did we do today? Today, we focused on plans that are already in place. We trained, we tested new capabilities, and we exercised. While all of you were working here, we had our emergency operations center activated. In my tenure here in Chicago, it was one of the largest activations we had next to the Cubs winning the World Series. So for that, we had both Northsiders and Southsiders there. <laughs> we had people that had never walked into our emergency operations center, and by the time we were done, playing with resource requests and mission tasks in Web EOC. We had folks from the local, state, federal, and private sector all in our office working together to figure out problems, to problem solve and explain how we can work on mission requests in terms of where do you find a pump? And I need a quote unquote type one pump. And of course I'm standing there and someone goes, what's a type one pump? 
and the FEMA people in the corner were just snickering a little bit. <laughs> but that was okay because what we were able to do is we were able to give them more of a story. We could explain something in a low, no-fault environment. We could explain, hey, if you need pumps, water, how many pumps do you have? Now let's take this and let's look at the county. County, how many pumps do you have? And then we had our state right across. They said, and whatever you can't fulfill, send over to the state because we already had a disaster declaration, so it seems like all the Calvary's coming. But then I looked at FEMA and I said, but with that disaster declaration, it looks like we have capabilities coming in from your side too. This was all in the span of four hours. I wish that actually happened that way. But we know time is always at our, at, at, uh, time is always the one piece that we can't really do anything about. Also, we think about all the things going on today and all the problems and the challenges and the problem solving we worked on. We had events taking place throughout the city. We had fires, accidents, people displaced uh, due to fires. All that stuff was happening while we were exercising here. So it shows you that when we bring people together, we can address any needs and really serve the residents that we all love. So where do we go? What do we do? We can't just stop here. We have to continue. Our director always talks about single points of failures. We always talk about, don't give a card when you're on an incident. Know your players. Know your capabilities. We learned about new capabilities sitting in our emergency operations center today. We learned that we have resource uh, pieces of paper that are at our fingertips that we can identify within the city and then work with our county jurisdictions to identify what resource gaps that we need to fulfill. So today's our opportunity. When we go from here, we know we're on, a, we're on cycles. ComEd does this a lot. When I first came in, ComEd had the drill. So we're on a two-year to three-year cycle. So I know this is going to happen again. And we're going to play. And we're here to support everybody. And we know you're all here to support us. So thank you. When you go home tonight, you have homework. What could we have all done better? How could we have enhanced our capabilities to be able to serve our residents? And more importantly, how do we always make sure that we go home to our family? So again, thank you. Thank you on behalf of our director, thank you on behalf of our residents, and thank you for taking the time and the energy out of your busy schedule to be able to address this exercise and be able to make it the best it could be. Everyone have a great day. Make sure you get home safe. Thank you. I forgot my one important thing was to introduce my next speaker. So uh, with that, uh, it is a great honor to be able to introduce the next speaker uh, is Colonel Jennifer Ryan. Uh, who is from the Army Reserves. Uh, talk about just meeting. Uh, I walked in the door and met a new partner that's going to be able to uh, help us out in times of disaster. So, ma'am, it's all yours. Good afternoon. So, like you said, I'm Jennifer uh, Ryan. I am the uh, Deputy Commander for the 103rd Expeditionary Sustainment Command. We're out of Des Moines, Iowa. We oversee five states, uh, Michigan, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, and Illinois. So again, I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, the Army Reserves includes the substantial capabilities which are vital to disaster response. And we stand uh, ready to support and lead agency, uh, the lead agencies for domestic, domestic emergencies and, domestic, and uh, disaster relief. As has been said before, it's a collaborative effort to plan and partnership to ensure that we come together and to make it successful and to address the needs of the community. So I thank you for inviting me. I wasn't going to be up here very long. You know, I'm also here with the National Guard. This is really, they, they are the stateside uh, response initial, you know, when they come in first. The reserves are definitely, you know, we've just been added to that and we're very proud to be part of that. Um, but again, thank you for inviting me. It was a very impressive setup to see how you exercise the multi-regional disasters you had today and potential concerns and how the response went. So again, thank you. I will be followed by Timothy McGuire, the ComEd Senior Vice President, Distribution of Operations. Thank you again. Thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon. So my job is easy. Starts by saying a big uh, thank you to all of you, not just for today's drill and um, your role in that drill, whether you were an active participant or a controller 
observer, whatever it may be. But more importantly, what you do when you're not here, which is you're always out there serving the public. Much of what you do um, goes unnoticed, and that's probably a good thing 99% of the time. Um, but when people need you, that's when you step forward, and um, that's what this is all about. And again, we represent uh, our constituents. We come together. We continue to find better ways of doing things um, to deal with that next disaster, which we hope is never here, but we know eventually will be here and will come. So again, thank you. Thank you on behalf of ComEd, uh, on behalf of Ampere Majori, Terry Donnelly, our COO, for everything you do. Um, so hopefully, despite the great weather we had today, um, how many of you were able to get around and at least see uh, the trailers, um, emergency trailers, uh, command centers? Show of hands. So you're able to brave it, that's, that's good. Um, I would say I did 50% of it, I admit it. Did not bring an umbrella, nor did I buy one, but, um, but we made it work. So do we have any of uh, the actual participants in here? Were they able, I know a lot of them are closing shop outside and I don't think it's raining right now though, is it? Anybody? Couple? Let's give them a round of applause for all their work. <clears throat> And I would be remiss if I didn't also thank the University of Illinois at Chicago <laughs> for the outstanding support, as well as, uh, again, thinking on their feet. We had some adverse weather, and we took care of our VIPs with a, a quick decision of getting them in a, in a, in a van to take uh, the dry tour. Apparently, I'm not VIP enough to get on that tour <laughs> because I was still walking around in the rain. But uh, great thinking, great response, and, um, you know, again, the show must go on, and we kept moving, so thank you very much. I think we all agree uh, we can never be too prepared for disaster strikes. In fact, um, the more we drill, like we have today, the more we'll find there are gaps in what we do. Um, I think David mentioned earlier just the fact that we have 50 public and private uh, organizations represented here today tells us how this is growing. And again, these are all the people that do that work I mentioned earlier behind the scenes, but this is an opportunity to develop those relationships and get to know who you're talking to on the other end of that phone uh, when a disaster strikes. So um, what we do is important here. Uh, certainly the restoring of critical infrastructure is key to ensuring uh, services needed by our responders, residents, and businesses are uh, available quickly. And we bring back some peace of mind to communities that perhaps often are devastated by natural disasters. Uh, at ComEd, we have also made significant improvements to the grid. Um, in fact, since 2011, I referred to earlier today as our EMA, that was when we had the, uh, the bill for our Infrastructure Act. We have in, enhanced our system, and from 2011 through today, we have resulted in over 4.8 million customers um, not seeing an outage they would have prior to this infrastructure improvement. Um, significant improvement. However, despite the fact that we have made the system more reliable, Mother Nature will do what she does to our system. In fact, Less than 48 hours ago, we had 70 mile an hour winds out west, 65 to 70, and, and we had 120,000 customers out. I'm happy to say that we're down to about a couple hundred now. Now I would hesitate to say that, or be, what would that have been like before we did um, the rebuild? Would that have been four or 500,000? I'm not sure. The weather seems to be a lot more volatile than, uh, say, the past, over the past five years, it's been more volatile compared with, I would say, the past 10 or 15. Um, but anyway, um, we are here again um, to find better ways of doing things. That's why we drill. Um, this is, in fact, the third time that we have hosted this event. And the um, minute this is over, we'll be planning for the next one, I'm sure. Um, today's drill was about the weather. There are many other things that will impact us and draw us together. Um, and we won't even talk about such things as cyber attacks and those things, which also make their way into the uh, current, current way we work today. So we look forward uh, to the next chapter. We look forward to uh, hearing your feedback. Matter of fact, um, Dave told me, I have to do my commercial here. Everybody should, if you still have your packet or if you put it in your car to protect it from the rain, you should have received one of these forms, feedback form. I ask you, if you don't have it with you, but it's, it's in your car or something, fill it out, get it back to us. Um, we definitely want your feedback, what went well, where you have found some additional gaps. Most importantly, where we have opportunities as a team to improve going forward, because that's what this is all about. 
servicing our customers and uh, being there when they need us at most. So uh, please do that. And then lastly, I'm also supposed to mention that we have ComEd is hosting, right? And am I going to pronounce this the right way? Moxie's? Moxie's Restaurant tonight, for those of you at uh, 1500, 3 p.m. this afternoon, uh, Moxie's is at 724 West Maxwell Street, Chicago, and ComEd will be hosting, um, I guess, some drinks and probably some appetizers. You haven't eaten enough yet, but by then you'll be hungry again. And uh, again, continue those relationships that Dave mentioned earlier. It's all about grab somebody's card. If you just, you know, heard a speaker earlier and you hadn't met them before, walk up, get their card, get the relationships, and turn that uh, face into a partner. Okay. And with that, I believe I'm the last speaker, and. Um, this concludes Operations Power Play 2017. Please drive safely and hopefully enjoy the weekend. So thank you. <laughs>